Today is a very special freaking day. If you are the owner of a Radio Master TX16S or any other OpenTX radio, but especially the Radio Master TX16S, because there have been features that have been promised to us for a long freaking time and OpenTX has not been delivering them. Remember back when the freaking Flysky Nirvana came out? Remember that radio? No, some of you don't. Some of you didn't even get in the hobby since that radio came and went and they said, this radio will be fully supported by OpenTX in OpenTX 2.4 and OpenTX 2.4. That was two freaking years ago. That was two freaking years ago. At OpenTX 2.4 was right around the corner and it's still not freaking here. But the Edge TX devs have us covered and they are going to deliver us from the desert of the OpenTX developers with big air quotes around them because as far as I can tell, they ain't developing nothing. <laughs> Joshua Park, well, you're, you're going to learn something today. We're going to install HTX. What's HTX? I'll tell you. Get on with the Roll the intro. <laughs> um, open TX devs, don't get pissed off at me. I know you're working your butts off behind the scenes. I know. Uh, and I know there's reasons that the OpenTX development is not as fast as some people would like. And they're perfectly good reasons. It's just a silly intro. Don't, don't, don't freak out. All respect to the OpenTX devs, but there are things that people have been waiting for and they want them and they want them today. And what Edge TX is, is it is a new firmware, a new operating system for any OpenTX radio, not just the Radio Master. And basically some other devs said, hey guys, do you mind if we just kind of run with this? And that's the beauty of open source. Yeah, you can just run with this. So Edge TX is pushing the development of OpenTX forward. And if you don't want to wait for these new features that are in Edge TX to eventually sort of make their way back into OpenTX, or maybe Edge TX is just, remember Betaflight? Betaflight was this fork from CleanFlight and it was new features. And then they got so far ahead that CleanFlight, everyone was like, all right, fine, Betaflight's the new thing. Who knows if that'll happen? But today, Edge TX, you can get installed. And you get touchscreen support, yes. And there are a couple other small things that Edge TX is going to give you. But the main thing, the main reason you might want to get interested in Edge TX is the stuff that's coming. I've seen some developer behind the scenes not ready for primetime previews of the stuff they're working on, and it is really freaking cool. So today, minimal advantage of going to Edge TX, but some of the stuff that's coming is really freaking cool. Let's Let's do it. And we'll start here at the EdgeTX website, edgetx.org, links to all the stuff I'm talking about in the video description. Uh, EdgeTX has a installation guide. We're gonna go to the EdgeTX installation guide and we're just gonna work through it. Before we do that, it is highly recommended that you back up your current firmware and SD card contents in case you need to roll back. So let's do that. We'll get the radio turned on and we will plug in USB to the top of the radio, sir. Plug in USB. And we will select USB storage. And we will also start up OpenTX Companion. And in OpenTX Companion, we will do read models and settings from radio. Boom. Uh, having done that, we will do file save as. I have a folder for my backups. Here we go, TX16S models and settings. Yes, I want to replace that. That is saved. And then over here, we've got my SD card contents. And I can just copy. I got a folder for that as well. The next thing we're going to need to do is download the Edge TX flasher. Um, the, they have a separate flash, firmware flasher utility. It can be flashed with OpenTX Companion, but we're going to try to use the Edge TX flasher. So we'll go to Assets, and uh, I'm running Windows. 
I don't know why it says Windows AMD 64, but okay, Windows sounds about right. After downloading that executable file, I'm gonna go ahead and run it and we'll get a warning and we'll run anyway. I don't think we're gonna need OpenTX Companion anymore. The next step is to prepare your SD card. Uh, we're gonna do that by powering on the radio. We're gonna plug in USB and we will choose USB storage as usual. You know what? This is so freaking annoying. Yeah, bad radio data, you don't say. I'm taking it out of the radio because it's slow as crap. And I'm just putting it in an SD card reader. And then we're gonna run the HTX Flasher app. We'll skip over Flash firmware for now and we will set up SD card. Uh, our radio target is the Radio Master TX16S. Our voice pack language is gonna be English only. This saves a lot of space on your SD card. By default, OpenTX stores all the voice packs for all the languages, it's kind of unnecessary. How often do you change languages? And then we're gonna select the drive letter for our SD card, which is gonna be drive with all of this stuff in it. That is drive letter M. And uh, boy, howdy, like, Surely, okay, yeah. <laughs> so it's not letting me pick my system disk. It's only letting me pick removable drives. That's that's good. Uh, we'll choose drive letter M. We'll double check that that's correct. It is M. And I guess we should erase disk before flashing. Sure. And we will write to SD card. Now notice that it is leaving behind the models and the radio, uh, the models and the radio folders, which are needed by most radios. Uh, that's gonna hold your models and your radio settings. If you have any custom widgets, any custom sounds or any custom images, then you may also want to save the sounds widgets and scripts folder, sorry, Lua scripts and so forth. Uh, since we backed up our SD card contents, we're gonna be good to go there. We will continue. Next with the radio powered off, we will plug in USB uh, and that will put it into DFU bootloader mode. Um, we're we're going to try to flash it in that mode and we should say that sometimes the DFU drivers in Windows don't work right. If you are unable to get this working, you may need to go to this page, the Impulse RC downloads page and download the Impulse RC driver fixer. Basically, you plug your radio in, you run that app, it fixes your driver for your flight controller, which is actually your radio. It just thinks it's a flight controller. And then once the driver is fixed, everything should be okay. You may not have to do this, give it a try, but if you have trouble getting it to flash, this may be the thing that fixes it. Let's find out. So we'll hit flash firmware. We will choose a releases branch and we'll choose the 2.4.0 release. I don't wanna flash a nightly release. We're gonna be flashing to the Radio Master TX16S. And we will hit flash radio firmware. And we are done. Uh, don't worry about this invalid DFU suffix signature. Uh, OpenTX has always said that. I have no idea what it means. It's never mattered. So don't let that freak you out. You are ready to start using HTX. Uh, let's give it a try. We're gonna unplug USB and we will power up. Oh. That's a good sign. Now this is normal. Bad radio data storage warning is normal. Actually, no, it's not. What that means is that you did not copy your radio and your models folders over uh, from your old SD card. Um, if you didn't see this on screen, I actually had to format my SD card. So the way that you should have done it if you were following along is that you uh, downloaded the new SD card contents, the installer preserved your radio and your models folder, and you will not see bad radio data. But if for some reason you started with a fresh clean SD card and you did not copy over your radio and your models folders, you'll get this and you need to go back, copy over your radio and your models folders, otherwise your models won't get preserved. Ah, uh, there we go. SD card conversion required. That's what we wanted to see. Converting. Boom. No need to calibrate or anything. And select model. There are all my models. Yay. Awesome. This is not a welcome to HTX tutorial. Uh, and frankly, most of what HTX has going on is the same as what you had going on in OpenTX. Uh, the big interface improvements are still in the works. But if you are interested in getting your freaking touchscreen, oh, double tap. Oh, 
if you're interested in getting your touchscreen working at the very least or just getting ahead of the curve with Edge TX, this is how to do it. Thank you so much to the Edge TX devs for taking the lead in making this stuff happening. Uh, open source projects like this are completely driven by volunteer efforts, mostly. There are definitely some times where people are making money off it, but in this case, these guys are putting in this work there. There's, as far as I know, there's no money in it. It's just they wanted to see this stuff get improved and they took the initiative and put in their time and effort. They're busting their butts and uh, it's, it's just really great of them to do that. Um, Maybe uh, eventually, as HCX keeps doing uh, firmware updates, then I'll do some update videos on you know the new features that are coming out. So make sure you're subscribed, huh? And hit that notification bell so you don't miss those when they come. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or... Like, just, here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.